I'll be showing the best apps in Windows 11. Windows 11 just came out recently and there are some brand new pre-installed apps as well as updates to your longtime favorites. So let's get started. The first Windows 11 app is not one you would expect and it is the lowly clock. So let's launch the clock app. Nice new icon. Now there's been a really cool improvement added to the Windows clock. You've always had things like the timer and alarms and all that good stuff, but focus sessions. Now what I'll do here is give myself some focus time and this is called focus sessions. So let's get started. Now what you see here is a focus session and there's a couple of different aspects. There's the actual setting of the focus time and we'll get to that. There's progress so you can give yourself some goals. It also, because I've signed in with my account here, pulls in my tasks. So I can have a specific task for this focus session. So in this case, I wanna finish my TPS report next gen designs. I will select this for this session. So that's gonna be my focus. And the best part in my opinion is the linking of Spotify. So if you have Spotify, you can have some chill music going on in the background while you focus and work on your task. So I'm gonna link my Spotify really quickly here. And I'll sign in. Now my Spotify is signed in. I have different playlists here as focus music that it suggested, so deep focus, jazz in the background. I'll select hammock radio. Now I'll go up and set my focus time and I can have a couple of options. Maybe I wanna kick it up to 60 minutes and I'll have one break. You could choose to skip a break. And now what I'm gonna do is start my focus session. So I've got my chill music going. There's a countdown here. Now I can switch into my focus, which is writing this next generation TPS report. Everything is chill. Now when I'm all done, I can come back in here and you know what, I'm going to end this a little bit early. Normally I would get a five minute break in 30 minutes, I'm going to hit stop. So I ended my focus session and it shows I only focused for one minute here, but I, you know, I did a lot of progress on my TPS report. I'm going to check that off. So my task is done. And also up here, you can see that I, my daily goal is one hour. I completed one minute, you know, I got some work to do. It also keeps track of streaks, so if every day your goal is to focus for one hour, you can have a streak going, make it kind of fun. The second app is Microsoft Teams, which is now built right into Windows 11. If I go down to the taskbar, there is this little icon, I can click this, and right here, this is a version of Teams that is built for consumers, and it's great for chatting with friends, with family, it's kind of like the next generation Skype is how you might think about it. So I'll click get started right here. This launches the new Teams dialog for the first time, and I'm gonna use my consumer account, which is my Hotmail account. I could choose to use a different account, but in this case, we'll just choose this. So the first time you run it, you put in your name, you put in your info, you can sync your outlook.com and Skype contacts so you can find all the other people that first time. So if you're using Skype for a while, this is really easy, and I'll choose Let's Go. So here is Teams. It's very similar to the corporate version of Teams or the school version of Teams, but it's a little bit more scaled down. It's really focused on chat as well as video. But you can see here the interface is fairly similar. I can go and look at my activity. That will show up here. You can chat with people. So I can chat with my contacts, I can form groups, and there's also a calendar. So if you're familiar with Teams, this calendar will look similar. And I can go and obviously do meetings. So I can meet now and I'll start meeting. This is just like the version that you have in Teams or work or Teams for school. Turn on my camera. Hey there, hit background filters. Maybe I wanna blur my background like this and then join. I can get a meeting link. I can share it in Outlook Calendar, Google Calendar, or just share this link with an email. I'll just close this. Here I am in Teams meetings. All these options up here, very similar to what you've seen in a normal Teams meeting. And I'll just leave here. So that's a quick tour of the Teams that is built right into Windows and expect updates and improvements to come here in the future. The last thing I'll show with Teams in Windows 11 is the compressed mode. So Teams is running in the background here, and if I click it, it's a lot like Skype. So I have my contacts here, and I could go click here and start a chat with Ari or a call or a video call, we'll close it. And I have my chats, my contacts, I could do chat or meet right here. So this is just a little quick view. The third app is the snipping tool, which has been improved. So let's open up the start menu and type snip. The snipping tool lets you do screen captures and screenshots and annotate them. It's really handy for research. In this case, here's the snipping tool and a couple options. I can drop this and choose what type of snip I want. I can also choose to set a time limit. So in this case, I actually wanna say snip in three seconds so I don't have to have everything already. It'll give me a chance to pull up my research browser. So let's do a snip in three seconds and now I'll click new. So let's pull up the edge browser. Ooh, ooh here we go and it just went. 
Now it's in snip mode. I've been researching the Surface Laptop Studio. This is a really sweet laptop. I'm kind of lusting after it. And so I want to snip a picture right here and I'll draw and click the mouse to draw my square and then let go of the mouse button. Now it pulls that right into my snipping tool. Now I can do some cool stuff on top of this image. So I can crop it. I have a few cropping tools, so maybe I want to tighten that image up a little bit. I can click and drag and then click the check. There's also some inking tools. So maybe I want to drop this down and I want to make my inking a little bit bigger and I want to do a nice circle around that. Cool additions, I've got the ruler. So maybe I'm drawing something and I've got some purple and I want to draw a line right here and keep a nice ruler to keep that straight. I can even go and choose a protractor. So if I want to make a nice circle, maybe I want to make a yellow circle, I can click and drag and it's kind of slick how this protractor works. It lets you draw around that. And there are a few other options as well. Now I can also save this out. So when I'm done, I click save and I'll save this to my desktop and click save. And lastly, there's some settings. So if I go to the three dot menu, I can go right here and choose settings. Some options, you could say always ask to save snips. So if I'm using the shortcut key, always pop up that dialogue. You can use the multiple window feature. You can even now match it to your dark mode, light mode, or system setting. So I've said match to system setting, but the snipping tool now supports dark mode as well. And then lastly, just to show my favorite shortcut key in the world for Windows 11 and other windows in the past is the Windows Shift S shortcut. So I'll close this. If I do Windows key Shift S, it puts it into snipping mode automatically. Again, just click and draw the square. And now I can paste this anywhere I want. The fourth app is one that's been around a while, but you might not have explored it in quite some time, and that is Calculator. So open up the Start menu and type Calculator, and then launch it right here. Now this is the basic calculator app, and you're probably like, ah, oh, who cares, it's just a calculator, Mike. Well, if you go to the hamburger menu here, there's a bunch of options. Not only there's that scientific calculator, which is really handy for a lot of different education scenarios. There's a graphing calculator now, if you've never seen this, and even a programmer calculator. So if you need to convert some hexadecimal, it's right there. The part that I like best though is the conversion. So all these converters we have here, we have currency, volume, length, weight and mass, temperature. So if you're looking to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit, super easy. If you're looking to do something like currency, this one's really nice. You know, what is $50 in Euro? Hey, it's right there. If you want to choose a different currency, there are a bunch of different currencies built right into your calculator. So that is kind of handy. And the last one that's kind of nice is weight and mass. You're like, I want to calculate kilograms to pounds. No problem. 42 kilograms is about 92.6 pounds. And down here, about equal to, you know, here's a ton in the UK versus the US. Even it's 0 0.01 elephants worth of weight. So really useful stuff. Anyways, I encourage you to go explore all the different options that are in this calculator. It's had some massive improvements recently. The fifth app, and while not brand new, has had great updates and is part of Windows 11 is the Edge browser. Edge has been rebuilt on the Chromium open source background. And right down here, I'll click and launch the Edge browser. Now, if you haven't seen the Edge browser, there's a bunch of improvements. One of the best ones, in my opinion, is that it has the immersive reader built in, which makes reading more accessible and inclusive. So I'm on a blog here. I'm going to scroll down and select a set of text right here. And if I right click, I can choose open selection and immersive reader. You can see that we've reduced distractions in this mode. And at a most basic level, you can read aloud anything you put in here. So if I go here and click read aloud, it's filled with emotion, moments of connection and tough questions. You'll hear a very high quality voice. We call this neural text to speech. And so you can read aloud anything. So have any web page read to you and I'll close this and I can change the way the page looks. So maybe I want to choose a different background. Some people like with a darker background. There's a few different options here to choose from. I'll leave it on dark. You can make the text a little bit bigger like this. I can also do grammar tools. So if I want to break words into syllables like this, really easy. Maybe there are people who have challenges with reading, want to highlight the different parts of speech like nouns, verbs, adjectives, or adverbs. You can customize that. You can also have reading preferences. So if I want to focus on just one line at a time, for example, I can do that or three lines or five lines. If I click these arrows here, I can scroll up and down. I can even do things like translation. So in this case, I can choose one of many different languages, but I'll translate into French and I'll say translate entire page. Now the entire page is in French and I can go here and click read aloud. C'est rempli d'émotions, 
de moments de connexion et de questions. So really powerful, you can read aloud on any type of text. I chose it in French, but it works in all sorts of languages. And if you click the little immersive reader button right here, you can exit that immersive reader and go back to the main page. It even works on places like Wikipedia. So here's a Wikipedia article I have. I'll go to the immersive reader icon here. You can also hit F9 for the shortcut. Now I have the immersive reader up and I can click read aloud. Coliseum. So that immersive reader is available on any text you have in the Edge browser. Another nice feature in Edge is vertical tabs. So in the upper left right here, if I click this, I can say turn on vertical tabs. Now my tabs are along the left hand side. This is nice in case you don't want all your tabs across the top cut off and compressed. This is a really nice way you know, I can reorder tabs, drag drop, I can close different tabs. I can go here and make that really narrow or I can make it really wide. So this is just a different way to have your tabs. If I can create a new tab just like I would normally, they're just vertical. And I can even compress these if I want to have them like this and have it automatically be a flyout. If I click this button and choose turn off vertical tabs, they go back along the top like they were before. The last cool thing I'll show in Edge that a lot of people haven't seen is the Math Solver tool. So what I'm going to do is I've searched on some different algebra equations and we have a built-in Math Solver to Edge. This is super slick. I'm going to click on this one here and this is just a PDF. Now in the upper right, go to the three dot menu and choose more tools and then choose Math Solver. On the right hand side, this pops up the pane and it says drag and resize the box around a math problem you want to solve or you can click here and type it out directly. But what I'm going to do is go and select this math problem right here. I'm clicking and dragging around the problem and let go. And then this little menu pops up. I'll choose solve. On the right hand side, you can see here it already solved it, but show solution steps is really cool. I click this and step by step, it shows me how that problem was solved. This can be great for people working on homework. Maybe the parents can't help out or the guardians, whoever is working on those problems can get a little assistance. It even will graph it for you. You could say graph in 2D, graph both sides in 2D. And then there's recommended videos and other learning content that you can get access to. And then also at the top, if I hit the three dot menu, I can say view solution in a new tab. This launches the math solver site. This is mathsolver.microsoft.com. It's even more details here. I can view the solution steps. I can even get that same immersive reader for my math problem. So if I click this, my entire math problem is now in the immersive reader. I can read it out loud. Steps for solving linear equation. So a lot of inclusively designed tools built right in and math is built right into Edge. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you want to keep up with all the latest videos I'll be releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell to keep notified for all the latest posts.